next guest, my next guest is the most upvoted commenter slash poster on the now defunct Red Pill subreddit. I, of course, am talking about Gay Lube Oil. And, uh, you can follow him on Twitter, at Gay Lube Oil. And GLO, you know, you have some very interesting concepts uh, that you'd like to talk about. And the main, yes. right, and the main reason, it's very interesting uh, what, what we talked about on the air. And I actually mentioned it a little bit uh, at the top of the show. And, you know, we call it red pill masturbation. And there is such a thing as the concept of red pill masturbation. And we talk about hypergamy and monkey branching and all of the same things. And listen, it's very beneficial to guys who are new to the red pill. There are guys finding the red pill every day, but there are guys, there are consumers and purveyors of the red pill who need to sort of take things to the next level and discuss new concepts. And that's what you're on here to talk about today. The first one is called the fall of the primitive symbolic exchange. And there was a video and I, I unfortunately, I, I mean, it was, it's a 12 minute video, but it, right. there's a video called capitalism and schizophrenia. So go ahead and let, let's go ahead and discuss the fall of the primitive symbolic exchange and what that has to do with that video, capitalism and schizophrenia. Okay. So the, the underlying thesis is that our whole culture runs off of the logic of capitalism. And before modernity, when we were tribal, uh, we would barter for things. So if you needed something, you would, it, everything was predicated on use value, which is to say how useful something is. Right. But now with the advocate advent of capitalism, we're not focused on use value anymore. Um, sometimes we're focused on exchange value, which is to say how much money you can get get something. Right. So if I give you a brick of gold, you're going to take it because you know that you can exchange it for a lot. Right. But beyond that, there is symbolic value. And symbolic value is the best way I can explain symbolic value is let's say there is a pink Jeep and a blue Jeep. Okay. They have they have the same use value and they probably have the same exchange value. But uh, you know that the, the dude in the pink Jeep sucks dick. <laughs> like right, the, right. the pink Jeep symbolizes that he sucks dick. So the pink Jeep is a fetish item, which is to say an item used primarily for that symbolic value. Okay. So what happens is initially we were focused on how useful something is. Right. Then in that and and that's pre-modernity, modernity, the industrial revolution, we're focused on how much we can sell it for. Um, and this this applies sexually to and then finally right now we're focused on how many Instagram likes can we get. Right. So symbolic value. Right. So every era we're focused on a different kind of value. So right now, the best strategy to get laid is if you're the kind of guy who will get her more likes on social media, that's what's going to get you laid. Hmm. It's it's not about being a useful guy. We, so so that's that's what post modernity is. It's not about how useful you are. It's not about how strong you are or what you look like. You could be fat and retarded like DJ Khaled, but because <laughs> you're a meme you will get your dick sucked because symbolically you're valuable, even though, I mean, he's the Holy Trinity, of course. right? Yes. He's fat. He's retarded. Like, he's retarded. Like <laughs> he's ugly. Like, like, like he hits all the check marks. Right? right. But symbolically he's valuable. So DJ Khaled really proves this uh, thesis. Well, so the fall of symbolic exchanges as capitalism speeds up, faster and faster and faster, uh, people will identify with symbols and unidentify with symbols faster. Right. So um, you can see with social media, there's there's new ways of dressing, or let's say with, with regards to the red pill, uh, you know, people are wearing these Donald Trump hats, or uh, they have all these commodities, and you know, you have a lot of those commodities on the table, uh, in front of you. And so people will identify with those commodities. They'll say, you know what? I'm a Donald Trump kind of guy. I'm wearing this hat. And then, you know, five years later, they take that hat off and they put off a new hat, put on a new hat. 
Um, in the same way a, a slut goes through lots of dick, you have a person going through a lot of identifiers or signifiers. Right. And then to the point where he flips through so many signifiers where he can't identify as anything anymore, and he becomes this hollow husk of an NPC. Oh, wow. And so so it, in the same way a woman can get so much dick that she can't love anymore, a person can hoard so many objects and flip through them so quickly that he loses all meaning. And so the only way to get out of it is we can ground ourselves either in we can racially identify right. or we could religiously identify so, some kind of identity that's solid. And once you have that foundation, you're going to be good. Now, you and I but, uh, now off the air, you and I discussed the fact that it's not likely to happen to a guy like me because I'm black. Right. I can only racially identify with being a black man. I can't. I can't connect and disconnect because I've always been black. I'm always going to be black. Of course, Michael Jackson is, right. you know, the exception to the rule. So how does, how does that, and again, I know you just touched on it, but how, how is that different from, I guess, say a white person? Are you saying that white people, uh, white women uh, in particular, identify, unidentify, then re-identify, and that kind of makes them sort of a mental slut? Right, right, but let's let's look at white men too. Okay. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna flip through, you know, Donald Trump alpha. They're gonna be, you know, like an alpha dad. They're gonna flip through these identities, but internally there's nothing. Like if if you get a like, black people know that there are certain things that they shouldn't do, because it will threaten their racial identity. Right. And and um, I know Hollywood has this thing about making black men put on dresses, like oh my it just. God, what in the fuck, dude? Seriously, GLO, what is that? What the so hell is I, that? They have this thing, but like a black man is like, okay, like as soon as I cross this dress threshold, that's it. Like I'm a sellout. I don't represent the black community. Like it's done. Like that's the threshold. Maybe there's other thresholds. Um, I think I think Dave Chappelle discusses it. Well, I can but... tell you. Listen, I can tell you what a few of those thresholds are. Okay, uh, is having a strong command of the English language. Now, black men like myself, we don't get as much hate, I guess, as we used to because it's not fashionable anymore. But dude, I've been called a sellout. I've been called a coon. I've been called an Uncle Tom simply because of the way I talk. You add that to the fact that I'm light skinned and I date white girls and all this other kind of stuff. That seems to be the threshold, at least as far as the black community is concerned. Right. Well, I mean, you you can see how those thre thresholds change, but mm. I mean, there's, there's there's definitely a few things that you don't want to cross, and that that keeps you in some good boundaries where you have a stable identity. Um, you know, to some degree, Eastern European men they're fine there. Asians they're okay, but as soon as we start looking into Western European men, and particularly Americans, they don't have boundaries. And so because they don't have boundaries, that's why whenever you see a tranny kid, it's a white kid. Yes, Desmond right? is amazing, right? Have you heard of this kid? Yeah, I, yeah, I try and like block it out of my mind. <laughs> but like, like I try to not know. Um, but the idea is that you can push any bullshit on them and they will absorb it because they're this um, unidentifiable NPC. Wow. And so, that, so this whole process, where first they'll flip through a whole bunch of identities, right, and then then they become this nothing person who just absorbs everything. A blank slate, so that's, to speak. That's the blue pill process. That's how you get a conformist. So if we're trying to red pill people, um, and you know, keep in mind, there's plenty of very masculine men who will get suckered into this nonsense. You need to stop this. Uh, I sent you a video we're falling down the staircase yes, right. of identifying and unidentifying. And um, it, it's, it's, I try and do it on the red pill, but it's very difficult because what will happen is you'll have a beta male and what he will want is he'll say, Hey, I'm a beta male. I'm a loser. Give me a whole bunch of identifiers. Hmm. And they buy, and, each, and I'll say, they buy each and every one of them because they don't really have direction. Right. And, and, and I'll say, no, 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 no. Let's, okay, let's, let's figure out the world. I don't want to give you any identifiers. 
because you know because you're just going to adopt these identifiers and throw them away in two seconds right so let's let's get you understanding the world so you don't keep falling down this staircase um and then somebody else will come in and then they'll give them a list of identifiers and so and then they're they're fucked but listen uh, i've got i've actually got a comment uh in here from a commenter um convicted booty eater Tony, yes, he stands convicted of eating the booty. I've absolutely not forgotten about that. That is on his TSR criminal record. He says it's not all it's always he says it's always about what you look like. What that says to me, GLO, is that guys like Tony, not that there's anything wrong with what he said, but he's he and and we don't want to outthink the room here, but that is a very simplistic way of looking at what you're talking about he says well it's always the way it's always about what you look like explain to him why he is wrong within the context well, of this discussion. just dj khaled just dj khaled steve proves him wrong Buscemi. steve Buscemi. you can look like absolute horse shit um and and he, he's wrong because dj khaled is a meme right that's how this and, goes. and people want to identify with dj khaled and I don't know if he watched the DJ Khaled sex tape or uh, oh, wait, how long he needs wait, to. Wait, I'm sorry. How... There's a DJ Khaled sex tape like this. Look there's the a... breaking news. What? Yeah. Um, oh my god. <laughs> that's my prescription. So for your your convicted booty eater, my prescription is he watches this DJ Khaled sex tape for at least a couple of hours to understand how it's not about what you look like at all. I don't know. I don't know how long he has to watch that for it to sink in, but well, listen, he does eat the booty, right? So it might it might take a little while. Um, let's take a let's take another turn here and talk. And now this is a very interesting topic that we talked about. Um, and this is something you called hysteria paranoia. Okay, so um, you can think of the psyche as a spectrum, and on the far left, that's hysteria. That's an endless questioning. So that's feminine. And on the far right, um, there is an overdetermination, a strong confidence. That's paranoia. So an example of paranoia is Alex Jones. He's archetypical paranoia. Like, you know, they're putting chemicals in the water. They're turning the freaking frogs gay. Like he's certain. Right. He's it's this absolute certainty. And so there's two issues that the audience can benefit from. The first one is any dealings with women, uh, you're gonna be dealing with uh, hysteria right away. Right, what is the solution? Now, now again, you and I, and you made a very, uh, an excellent analogy with regards to, with regards to the strong list five by five. You know that I swear by the strong list five by five, but we also, we also talked about how, how hysteria, paranoia can either help you or hurt you. So, and I don't want to get into the strong lifts and the big butt five by five. I don't want to get into that analogy because that was sort of, (laughs) that was a private conversation, but, but, but explain, explain to us how hysteria paranoia can help and hurt men and how it can help and hurt women. Okay. Well, first let's start with hysteria. Um, So women, they don't have a strong fixed identity. They're endlessly questioning. This could take the form of a shit test. So so i mean all of us have been here uh a woman will say why do you love me how do i know you love me how do i know that you love who i am and not who you want me to be why do you love me and am i that person like so the questions they never end and so the natural response for a man is to say like answer like like this is why they'll, right. they'll, they'll move into paranoia They'll, they'll give them concrete answers. And those answers are only going to be questioned. So, so it just feeds into the cycle. You know, it, it, if you start yelling at your woman, like, you know, what do you want from me? <laughs> She'll, she responds with a question, which is to say, why are you yelling at me? There you go. Which there is you more go. hysteria. So even in her rejection of her own hysteria, she continues her hysteria. So the only way out is you have to out hysteria her. Oh. You, you. <laughs> Like, so two negatives make a positive, right? Sure. Right, absolutely, absolutely. Right. So um, uh, I think two years ago, I was on the show with Samantha B. She was saying Donald Trump is a media whore. 
And then, so she has this definition of media whore, and she's questioned, like, why do you uh, support Donald Trump if he's a media whore? Okay. And my answer was, well, you're whoring off of his whoring. <laughs> like, like, you're, you're more of a whore. Like, you, you, need, you need him to be a whore so you could whore off of him, right? Right. So, so I guess my question to her was be like, what problem do you have with Donald Trump if you yourself are a media whore, right? Right. And then, and then uh, if you watch the exchange, she goes, well, I'm a whore too. So that's her making a definite, like, like a definite answer. Right. And as soon as they make that definite answer, you plug that answer back into all of their questions. So and, and you notice your answer compared you she asked you why do you support Donald Trump right she says she says Donald Trump is a media whore why do you support him and your answer like a man logical well you're whoring off of his media whoredom right and and she honestly she probably didn't fully comprehend what you were saying because again she was trying to out hysteria your hysteria right so so don't answer their questions ask questions about their questions they're gonna have to make a concrete statement at some point right right and when they do then you use their truth and their truth will answer all of their questions and it, it, it's like you solved you solved an algebra problem so lacan the person who developed all of this in his books he actually has those equations and you can it will work along these equations Man, oh man. You know what's interesting? I can always tell which because because GLO, you are a very you're a deep thinker, man. And I can dude, I can already tell you that at least half of the people in here are like, dude, what is this guy talking about? There are a very there there are very uh a precious few people who understand where you're coming from on that deep psychological level. But then we got this guy, Tony H, who says, Looks always matter, you you know, blah 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 blah. No, Tony H is a simple minded fuck who doesn't understand things like this. But then you've got guys in here like King Frozen T who says exactly. People under people understand where you're coming from. I actually have a really good question here. Uh, by Winston Wolf, he asks you, "Do you think identifiers can be used in the fake it till you make it phase?" That's a very good question. It, you you got to be careful because those identifiers are gonna, are going to weigh you down. So, so okay, well, what happens is you go to school, okay. right? And at school, they say um, they'll make you believe a whole bunch of stuff that you know you love America or that you care about freedom or that you respect women, right? So now you've identified as an American respecter of women, freedom lover, right? Right. So now you're holding on to those identifiers, right? Wow. But then I can fuck you. I can fuck you real hard by saying, well, because you respect women, now do this. Oh my God. So, so, so you're being you controlled by your identifiers. Yeah, yeah. So you, So feel free to identify with whatever you want, but don't let other people throw identifiers on you because that will be used to fuck you later. Oh my God, dude, that is. And, and, and that's the whole point of school is to load you up with those identifiers. Let's say, oh, because you love America, jump in front of a machine gun. Jesus Christ, man. Okay, so let's, as we, as we, as we draw to a close here with this segment, what, um, what's the, what's the prescription? What is, how can, because I believe that if, and again, Winston asks a very good question and the fake it till you make it thing. I believe that if you cling on to an identifier, you know, uh, you know, uh, for long enough, eventually you do become, you do become that person. You're no longer faking it till you making it. You really are it. So how right. can men in particular keep from, what's the best thing to do to keep from, I guess, I guess, uh, becoming the wrong identifier. How can men oh. become themselves without having, without getting permission from society in terms of what to be? Well, that, uh, I guess the, the solution is paranoia, right? So there's any number of ways you can get fucked. Okay. You can get fucked by taxes. You can get fucked by women. You could get fucked in, by the military, like any number of ways. And the only, like, you need to figure out what game they're playing so they can't fuck you. So, so the solution really is reading more so you know from what direction the dick's coming from. Jesus Christ, man. Dude, shout out to uh, uh, Emotep Hook. He said, with the $5 super chat, says, y'all are dropping uh, some serious science. The real DG says, this guy is gold. Uh, Mr. Napalm313 says, this shit is awesome. Sean Anderson says, I might have to watch this like 50 times. See, I'm telling you, when, and, and I don't, there, there are not many people out there who really think 
on your level. And I and I believe and, and it didn't always used to be like this, GLO. I think you started off like the rest of us started off, okay? And you are one of the few people you weren't red pilled by a woman. You were red actually go ahead and share with us and I'll, I'll I'll extend this a few more minutes. How did you find the red pill? How did the red pill find you? How did that how did that happen? Well, for my red pill path was a little bit different in that um I loved working out and I moved into personal training and um, I had six female clients and I had to wrangle them. And you have to keep women in their place. Otherwise they don't train with you and you don't get money and you don't get food. So, I mean, I got red pilled by the whole sales process. So it, being a personal trainer is like having six girlfriends at the same time. Right. And that's that's what happened to me and you know sexually i always did well you know yeah i had some whatever breakups but sure. really it was the amount of female clients i had um i just got so much volume in terms of female experience that uh <laughs> i figured it out like that good stuff man listen i got to have you on i got to have you on regularly because i remember Oh my god, I think the very first time you and I had a phone conversation, I was actually still living in Reno. And I remember we were on the phone for like two and a half hours discussing things like this. And it's become clear to me that you've done more thinking. You I mean, would you be opposed to maybe coming on once a week? I don't know, like maybe every Thursday at, at two o'clock, maybe we call the segment. Yeah, you know, I can come in every other week. Okay. Okay. And we can have a lot of fun. And um but to go back to your other caller maybe the idea is complicated yep but the application is easy with regards to hysteria if she's asking questions you ask her more questions and just just yeah. ride that bitch out you, you have more energy than her and she will become exhausted she will not be able to speak anymore and you just keep questioning her and then you'll get that silence you really want not only will you it, it, here's what'll happen before you get that silence she will make that concrete statement Right. At right. some point, she's got to answer one of your questions. And when you have finally mentally destroyed her, when you have when you have mentally exhausted her, fine. I fucked that guy because I was a slut. Oh, she doesn't have it anymore. You win. That's how this goes. Perfect. 